The MMA Discussion Podcast brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit the site for all your sporting news and needs. And we are also brought to you by our sponsor, SubmissionFC.com. Use the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off your order at SubmissionFC.com for all the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the MMAProfit.com. Play fantasy uh, MMA for free with a chance to win $100. Follow the link in the description to sign up. I am your host. Nicholas Peralta for MMA Discussion, uh, uh, the Facebook page, and I'm also joined. Big panel today. Big treat for all you guys. So first of all, we're brought to you also here with Jonas Peterman. Jonas, say what's up. What's up? And what's up, MMA guys? Discussion admin, Adam Carr. Hey, what's up? And of course, as always, we uh, as we would usually be having him on, as my co-host, uh, Chris Bagusha of SportsOfAnarchy.com. Hey, guys. What's going on? All right. I hope everybody has had a great, fantastic, uh, happy Thanksgiving, uh, and hope you had a safe Black Friday. Uh, not like me, you know, I had to punch somebody out. But <laughs> we were out for a week. Um, now we're back. We're going to talk about last weekend's fights. UFC Fight Night 57, Edgar versus Swanson. It was a great fight card, first of all, to start off. I thought it was exciting. I got to watch it with Jonas. Um, it was an exciting card. Jonas, what did you think of it? Man, it was off the hook. Um, <laughs> a lot of those fights in the you know main card were just off the charts. Uh, a lot of action. A uh, few fights in particular, Nick and I had a whole lot of fun just talking shit about. And it was just great. I had a great time watching it. And I'm really interested to see where uh, the winners of these fights go after uh, last Saturday. And Adam Carr, I, uh, from what I understand, you didn't watch too much of the card. You watched some of it. Um, tell me, uh, if anything, what you saw and what you took away from the card. Um, kind of shocked by Bobby Green, honestly. He just didn't seem to bring it like I expected him to, especially with uh, Barbosa and how shitty he seems to be lately. Bobby Green just didn't seem to let go. Yeah, well, I have a, I, I, I was actually impressed with Edson Barboza. He looked a lot different in this fight, and when we get to it, I'll explain why. Uh, Chris Bogusha, what, uh, what did you think of this past weekend's fight last Saturday? All right, I'm going to let you guys know it's Pauluka, not Pugluksha. Aha! Everyone gets You let me go through two stuff. podcasts saying your name wrong, and then you finally decide to shut me up about it. All right, all right. Well, I never really noticed, but. All right, fight fans, we'll, let's do this together. Easy, no, the card, the card was pretty good. It wasn't like. It wasn't the most outstanding cards, but I had good fun fights on it. I was really surprised by uh, Lexi Olenek. I didn't expect him to. He was getting beat up. Like, that fight was almost over and just knocked out Jared Ross Hall. And also, I was I was really surprised by how handily Edgar beat up Cub Swanson. I didn't think that was going to go down exactly like that. I figured Edgar would use his wrestling and his takedowns, but he just completely dominated Cub Swanson. Yeah, I I obviously didn't. For anybody that watched the last podcast, you know how I called that fight, and I did not call it that way. <laughs> um, fight fans, perish with me for a moment. Okay, so Chris, how do we say your last name then? Because if I'm going to get it wrong, everybody's going to assume that they got it wrong as well. So <laughs> I'll use I'll try to use phonetics. Pal Yuka. Pal Yuka. You just don't pronounce the G. It's pretty easy. And the I. <laughs> All right, so don't pronounce one third of your last name. Okay. Basically. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get used to it. Thanks for that, Chris. Uh, well, actually, for anybody that watched the prelims, it was exciting prelims. I, I obviously not just the star of the prelims, but probably one of the stars of the entire fight. If anybody watched on UFC Fight Pass, uh, Paige Van Zant versus Kaylin Curran, the fight of the night of the uh, of the of the card, was a fantastic fight. Um, I don't know if anybody saw it, but Paige Van Zandt look, couldn't have looked any better. She brought it, and so did Kaylin. I mean, they went at it. I mean, it was a war. And then Paige Van Zandt decided, you know, midway through the fight, she started utilizing this uh, strategy where she, it, it was it was sort of a la Cain Velasquez versus Jeremy Dos Santos 3, where she would pin Kaylin against the cage and just beat her up from there. Elbows and, and, and knees and got a few takedowns here and there. And Kaylin even got a few takedowns here and there. She made it a fight. Both women brought it. And I don't know if either of you uh, yeah. three men saw the fight, but it was a terrific fight. Yeah, I actually, I caught the Van Zandt current fight. I thought it was definitely a good fight. I mean, it, it was definitely deserving a fight of the night, too, because there was nothing that was that competitive throughout mm -hmm. the rest of the card. I mean, Wyman Valley flag was competitive, but it had its boring moments. That fight was... It was a really fun fight. I think 
on a scale of 1 to 10, it was probably, I think a lot of people see it as like a 9. I think it was more like a 7.5. It was a good fight. It wasn't. It wasn't, the, it just, it, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Just I'm talking in terms of technical aspects. Uh, Paige Van Zandt's takedown defense wasn't the greatest. And I mean, aside from that, it was like she had, didn't do what she was supposed to do. She she stuck to her game plan. She got taken down a few times. She got a few takedowns. It went everywhere. It was a fun fight. Yeah, she I, landed a lot and she got the finish. As far as um, who was sticking to their game plan, who were you talking about? Kaylin Curran or? Uh, Paige. Page, I disagree with that. Actually, I found throughout the fight that she was having a hard time with the with taking her down and 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 but standing up with her, she was doing great. It oh, was yeah, throughout. That. It was like in the middle of the fight, she realized I can put this girl against the cage and she can't really do yeah, too much about it. And then I'm gonna just start punching her and elbowing her. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like she adapted in a way throughout, like throughout the, the middle first of the fight. Round, she, in the first round, that's what she was doing. Then she started getting taken down and was struggling. A little to stop the takedowns, and then she went back to that. Yeah, I, I thought she did a tremendous job throughout the fight. It was a great fight. Jonas, did you happen to see it? No, I was actually on the road uh, texting you about All it. All right, so. fans, if you haven't seen that fight, Paige Van Zandt versus Kaylin Curran, go watch that fight. It's on Fight Pass. If you don't have it, go borrow somebody's. It was a great fight. It was. Um, I I I can't wait to see more of uh of Paige Van Zandt, and I'm also excited for this new division, and uh and that's a discussion that we will get into later on. Um, any other favorites of the prelims? Uh, you, Chris, Jonas. Um, I I enjoyed the James Vic Nick Kine fight, and I also liked the uh, the Magomedov Copeland fight. wasn't a good fight, but Magomedov showed some really good skills in there. Jonas. Yeah, definitely. Uh agree with the uh, Magomedov and uh, Copeland fight. Also, uh, I just want to say James Vick won on some home cooking right there, man. I, I, I don't see how he won. Yeah, I don't see how he won that decision. That was just straight up home cooking. Uh, it it seemed like, fans. yeah, it seemed like Vick was somewhat doing almost, like if you watch the fight, I had to watch it again, and it seemed like he was pulling off, if you pay more attention to his striking, he was pulling off like a Carlos Condit, Nick Diaz-ish kind of strategy. Where yeah. He was going backward a lot, but he was landing strikes. He um, was. But he wasn't landing many significant ones. Plus, he got dropped. And well, he did. It. He landed more than – I'm just looking at the stats right now. He landed more total and significant strikes than Hein did. And I thought he lost a round where he got dropped twice. But aside from that, I thought he won the other two rounds. I'm not entirely sure. I should probably go back and watch it again. But yeah, watching it again, I, I still give Hein the, the the I give him the first and I give him the third. So I mean, maybe it's a lot closer than than when we first initially watched it, me and Jonas together. Um, but I thought that yeah, it seemed like wow. I don't see how Vic won that. You got to watch. You really have to pay attention to that kind of fight. If you're not, then it's it's hard to see what Vic's actually doing. Um, yeah, aside that, from the aside from that first round because of the knockdowns, everything else was really close. Yeah, it was a close fight. Definitely, uh, I, I was impressed to a degree with Nick Hine, especially uh, it seemed like he he shouldn't be at lightweight. I don't know if that's because James Vick is just that big or he's just that small. But um, I don't know. I'm excited. I, I I'm interested in seeing how Nick Hine looks uh, in future bouts. Um, other than that, yeah, the prelims they were all right. They were pretty good. Um, Akbar Ariola. <laughs> Defeating Eve Edwards by an uh, armbar uh, in the first round. That was heartbreaking only to have to see Eve Edwards, Eve Edwards uh, take another loss. You know, yeah. um, He's probably getting cut. If yeah. not, I mean, if he doesn't get cut, he should just decide on his own that maybe you know, I can't contend surprised. with anybody. Yeah. Anymore, you know? He's an older dude. He's been around for a long time. I'd be yes. surprised if he's still around for another fight. It would suck to see him lose that way too. Go ahead, Adam. Like how many losses in a row in that? Is that not That's like, three losses in a row for Eve. Eve that, that weird DQ because of the uh, the drug one. So that's like oh, that one. was a no contest. So I mean, he's he hasn't won uh, since that's 2012 a- in in you know in five fights. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that's pretty bad. You know, um, and then and then his last two losses have been by finish. You know, he's been finished in the last two. Yeah, at least like his losses before that were close. They were split decisions. Now he's just getting beat. Yeah, and uh, that's just unfortunate. I don't, you know, and, uh, yeah, he's a nice guy too. He seems like a really good stand-up guy, but I don't. I think he's getting up there in age, and he's 38 years old. I think he's coming really close to retirement, if not already. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would like it if he just came out and said, hey, you know, let's just, you know, I'm ready to call it quits. Obviously, I can't compete with the best in the world. I can't even compete with the up-and-coming guys. Because, I mean, let's be real, who knew who Akbar Oriola was before he decided to beat, or just before he got in there and beat uh, Eze Edwards, you know what I mean? Yeah, not me. Yeah, uh, so. Edwards. Uh, yeah, probably the most heartbreaking uh, story of the prelims, for sure. Um, other than that, great set of prelims that we had. Uh, let's review the, the the main card and see where all these guys go. Matt Wyman versus Isaac Valley Flag. That was a very competitive fight. It was very uh, it seemed like a, a very dirt like dirty fight. I don't mean to sound weird when I say that, but it just seemed like those guys were in each other's faces almost the yeah. whole fifteen minutes. Like they yeah. just couldn't get out of each other's face, trying not to hit each other, elbows in the clinch against the cage. Um, yeah, it's a lot of that. Yeah, uh, Jonas, what did you think of that Bob. fight? Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, domination from Wyman on the ground. Uh, Valley Flag was uh, totally dominated there, and that's why Wyman won the fight. But once they were standing up in the clinch against the cage, it was pretty even. That's uh, you know, Valley Flag had a few opportunities there, and he just didn't take advantage. Yeah, they they landed pretty close to evenly. I thought um, Isaac was getting the better of some of the exchanges, but it was really close up there. You're right, though, Jonas. Wyman did dominate when it went to the ground. He took... Isaac's back quite a few times, and he did it really slickly. It was a good comeback for him. Yeah, I, I, it's it's great to see him back in there. I personally am, uh, like the guy. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of him. I enjoy watching him. He puts on surprising fights. When I say that, I mean like he uh, he goes in there, and you know you don't you don't you really never know what you're gonna see from that guy ever. Whether he loses or wins, he puts in something different, and I like that. And I don't know if that's an evolutionary thing on his part, or he's just trying out new game plans and tactics, and he just hasn't found the right one, maybe. I don't know. But each and every time he's in there, uh, I enjoy watching him fight. What do you guys – Jonas, I'll let you start first. Where do you think – who do you think he should fight next at life, if anybody? Uh, it's kind of hard. To get him somebody, uh, I don't know exactly where he goes. Got to fight somebody lower ranked in the uh, top 15, if anyone, if he gets up at all. So I have no idea where he goes, to be honest with you. I Chris, what idea. about you? Um, I say he fights Takanori only. Both Ooh. are kind of on the same level. Neither guy has really shown much <laughs> of a uh, much of a chance to really get to the top at this point. Just put him in a fun fight against each other. And that, that's really all that fight is. It's a fight, like a good opening fight on a pay-per-view. Get the fans into it. Have something big like that. Yeah, I mean, whether you blame, whether you think he's pay-per-view material or not, he's he's his fights are pay-per-view material, I would say. If he goes in there and just, you know, puts on one of the, you know, his his, his high premiere fights like he can, um, then, I, then, yeah, I would never have a problem with that. He's a great fighter. Yeah, I, I personally think... actually like that fight. Talking to Origomi. Uh, I've also stated I think he should fight uh, other fighters. I can't remember exactly who just right now, but um, against somebody like uh, off the I top of my head. Huh. Say it again? I don't know about the Gomi fight just because they always want to have Gomi fight someone who's like coming up like in the ranks and just to get them noticed. I think a Mitch Clark fight wouldn't be too bad. That makes sense. You know, because uh, I, mean, I mean, he's been gone guys, two years. I mean, to fight a guy like. Two in a row. Yeah, and, and, and he's been gone two years. To fight a guy like Isaac Valley Flag was definitely a tough fight for him, no doubt. Um, yeah. But also, the guy is now on the tails of a three-fight losing streak now. So, you know, that doesn't exactly say where Wyman's at in skill level because we don't, you know, because it seems like Isaac is on the decline. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that he'll get a mid-tier guy next. And Yeah, I think that's a – McGuire is like – I mean, not McGuire. Um, he <laughs> – Mitch Clark, who would beat John McGuire, that's why I said McGuire. They, um, mm-hmm. I think he's like that perfect mid-tier guy who's like coming up. He did beat Ali but the, that should be a fun one. Yeah. If they make it. Next fight on the on the main card that uh that went down: Joseph Benavides versus Dustin Ortiz. Now, as I saw that fight, I saw a Joseph Benavides that didn't look like he cared much for any kind of strategy or utilization of technique while he was in there <laughs> he seemed like he was just in there to headhunt uh, throughout the whole fight he mixed in he mixed in it he mixed in some grappling for sure uh and actually beat him there uh but barely uh ortiz gave a, a much uh, closer fight than i think many people gave him credit for i remember seeing a lot of predictions 
Many people predicted a Joseph Benavidez finish. I don't even know if I saw Benavidez's decision. Um, maybe one or two, but you know, Dustin went in there. He took he took a lot of hard shots and even and gave a few himself. And uh, and, and, he, and he could tell at the end of the fight, Benavidez had some lumps. And so uh, it was a uh, it was definitely an ex uh, exciting fight. It was a wild fight as well. Uh, Jonas, what did you think about it? Yeah, uh, that was a very close fight. Um, Benavidez did get the better of him on the stand up though. He got the better of uh, Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz just was very tough. He took a whole bunch of hard shots. Uh, he had a lot of heart, like you said, and I was really impressed with uh, Benavidez being able to just grind it out. Uh, it wasn't an absolutely dominating performance, um, and no telling where uh, Ortiz goes after that fight because you know even though he lost, hell, he did a damn good job. So I think he should uh, still be uh, relevant in the division for sure. And uh, he's two and two now, so I mean, but uh, uh, the thing about him is that he needs a, a, a. When he first came here, he had a knockout victory over a over a flyweight Brazilian whose name I can't remember right now. Um, and he looked great. And so, I mean, he looked like this up and comer, like, oh, look out for this guy. Lost two straight, but very close decisions. And then, uh, and then loses one here to the number two guy, the number two consensus, consensus guy in the division. You know what I mean? So, yeah. what he needs right now is, is, is just that kind of win, that win that, you know, shows, hey, I'm still here. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, a lose, a loss to Joseph Benavidez for any flyweight other than the champion means nothing. It's really. I mean, especially when you hang, when you were able to hang in there with him. Um, exactly. You know, and uh, Chris, what did you think of that fight? Uh, no, I thought it was a good fight. I thought once Benavidez saw that, I mean, yeah, he did go in head hunting a little, but I think once he realized that he was going to get the better of Ortiz basically everywhere, he just went for it. And he did land a few good shots that would have put most guys in the division out. It's just Ortiz is such a tough guy. It didn't. That's probably the main part of why it went to a decision. Yeah, he gave, he gave Ortiz's beard the business for sure. Yeah, um, he definitely did. And I think... I think a good fight next for Benavidez, he's just, he's lost to Demetrius Johnson twice, and he's just stuck in that, like, yeah. mid zone. He beats everyone else in the division, aside, basically, aside from John Dodson, he's fought almost everyone else in the division. I think, uh, for me, personally, yeah, and you're right, I think he should, uh, I think what I would like to see is some high-profile fights now, you know, yeah, just, to, just to see where he takes on other guys that have lost to Johnson. So, for me, personally, I would like to see uh, him face uh, Ali Bogatino. I was just about to say that. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Jonas, yep. Adam, what do you think of those, that fight? Yeah, I like that matchup a lot. Uh, yeah, at least coming off suspension, correct? Yeah, and his suspension ends in December, which is coming right up. So. All right. Uh, Adam, what do you think of that fight? I was thinking, depending on the health of uh, DJ, maybe even the winner of McCall Lineker. Um, you, oh, uh, for Benavidez? Benavidez just beat McCall too, not too long ago, didn't he? Last year in February, yeah. Yeah, but McCall was in a rough place then. I mean, he, he's really come across as a different guy. But he's gotten his head together. Yeah, it just seems like a. It seems like if for for the UFC, I don't think it seems smart to put a guy like Benavidez, who is like to to put him in the way of up and coming contenders. You know, that's why I think a fight with Bagatino makes sense because you don't think it's not it's not like we're gonna see Bagatino fight for the title anytime soon again. You know? Yeah, I agree. I think you got to get him in there with someone like ba Bagatino just because. He did just lose to DJ, and he, but he's still one of the top-ranked guys in the division. And McCall Lineker, the winner of that fight, will probably get, get DJ next. Yeah. Up. So and uh, for Dustin Ortiz, I I don't know who you'd put him against, but you can even put him against a guy like Brad Pickett or someone coming off a loss, maybe like uh, the loser of Zach McCloskey versus Tim Elliott that's coming up in a few months, depending how long he wants to take off, but. You can try to do something like that and put it together. I, I personally see the UFC throwing a, uh, throwing him a fastball and, and giving him uh, Chris Curry also next. I think that Chris, could work. I mean, I think that would be a great fight for Ortiz. That Imagine he good. wins that. That's really a statement kind of win right there to beat a guy yeah, who would, uh, fought for the title. That would be a good fight. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to the next fight, the one fight that we know that Adam uh, Carr watched. Uh, <laughs> Alexi Olenek, hopefully I said that right. Uh, versus Jared Roshaw, and uh, easily the most stunning finish of the night. Uh, Olenek Man. winning by yeah. the method that nobody thought he would win by in the first round when against Roshaw in an exciting fight, and I think that's kind of crazy to say because anybody that's seen <laughs> Roshaw fight in his last three fights has uh, knows yeah. that you know it's not like he's the most exciting fighter to watch. You know what I mean? 
Um, he's like, you know, he's like, uh, he's like, he's basically like GSP on anesthetics. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, you know, it's pretty bad. But this fight, he looked more aggressive, more, uh, you know, look, like he was looking for a finish. He looked like he was mixing it up with his takedowns and his striking. Uh, he looked like he had a, a real good game plan running in there, you know, and then he just ran straight into a left hand from bam, Russia, just boom. And went right down. And against a guy who's known strictly uh, for being a submission grappler. You know what I mean? Getting guys down, tapping him. Um, Olenek is that guy. And so uh, it, was, it was a shocking finish. Olenek won a uh, performance of the night, uh, getting some 50 Gs. And uh, for me, I personally, I think Olenek uh, got a good win. I don't personally think he gets him up into the top 15 just yet. Because that's he's now only two and zero, but with two finishes, which is impressive. Um, I think personally, I would like to see him fight like a guy like Derek Lewis, another guy who's known for finishing all of his fights. Recently, coming off a loss against Matt Mitchell, just to just to gauge a little more on where Olenek is at. Plus, it's a great fight for Lewis as well, because that's a guy who's coming off a big win. If he can beat a guy off a big win, it's a good fight for both guys. Chris, what do you think? Oh um, my, yeah, I, I mean. I was surprised to see Rosehold come out that strong, and he was just—he didn't even use his wrestling. He just put him against Cage, used his striking. Basically, he was just dominating at that point. It looked like it could be stopped at any second, and then that big hand, left hand landed and put him out. And I was really surprised to see that Olenek do that. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know exactly who you put him against, but uh, Derek Lewis, someone just outside of that top fifteen just to gauge if he could be a top 15 guy, just like, okay, maybe someone like Derek Lewis, who's like maybe 20, 25 in that area where you'd rank them. Cause in the heavyweight division, it doesn't take much cause it's not like a stacked division. Yeah. So, I think for all in it, it's just one more win away to be real. From what? One more win to getting into the top 15. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I hope you don't mean a title shot. <laughs> don't be silly. All right. Uh, Adam, what do you think of that fight? Yeah, I know that you saw it. It's the only one that we know that you've seen. So what did you think? I saw that, I saw that one on the Barboza one, and realistically, I got something simple to say about that fight. That fight's the, the result of what happens when you look for the knockout too much. The Bobby yeah. Green one? Yeah, we'll get into that in a sec, but for the, as far as the heavyweight fight. No, no, I'm talking about the heavyweight fight. Oh, okay, go ahead. He looked for the finish too much. He tried to force the finish, and he paid the price for it. Yeah, it's and that's kind of the thing with fighters. Oh, go ahead, sorry. They always say that like the knockout, the finish will bring itself to you. If you go looking for the knockout, you're gonna run into a punch. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's, a, that's the story of that fight. Yeah, and, and that's the story for every fighter. I mean, who's you know, it's it's always a matter of trying to find that balance, trying to find you know, uh, of getting in there, not going too crazy, not staying too relaxed, just staying perfect, staying aggressive, staying tactical. Yeah. Putting all of that together, it's hard. But for for the first time in Rochalk's UFC career, you saw that from him. You saw him trying to actually find that balance. Um, and so for me, it was a good fight to to see from Rochalk. I hope that you know he 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 you know he tightens that up. You know, works on the uh, you know the technical aspect of what all of it all. And uh, I think that you know if he does, if he's able to get that down. He's going to be a real dangerous guy in the future, say, like a year from now. You know what I mean? Uh, Jonas, what did you think of that fight? Yeah, this is a guy who's won 50 fights in MMA. All in it? And out of those 50 fights, this is only his fifth knockout. So <laughs> Russell absolutely just left his chin out there to get clipped. And mm -hmm. he did. He just got – he caught it. It was disgusting. And uh, <laughs> very good for uh, – very good for All in it, though. Uh, I'd also like to see him go up against a guy like Derek Lewis, uh, anyone in that range, because uh, hey, that's, it was an easy win for him Saturday, and that was kind of uh, we got to see more out of him. We got to find somebody that can test him a little more in more aspects and won't leave themselves uh, looking for a knockout, and completely dropping their defenses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely exciting heavyweight. I'm excited for both guys because Rochelle looks. Like, he could be improving. Olenek uh, continues to surprise us. Two decent heavyweights. And, you know, in, in a division where we're, we're starting to see it, it really shallow out these days, you know. So, for to see both of these guys, hopefully they can, you know, from from here, they both start making their way up. 
you know, Rochelle made a fan out of me with that fight because he was going after it. And I mean, yeah, you're right, Adam, he forced it. But I, but you see that he's actually trying to change up his game. He's trying to change up uh, how he fights, surprises opponents, which is good. You always want to manage some range of unpredictability, but you also want to manage a, a, a good a, a good amount of technicality, of, of 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 aggressiveness, of technique, of everything. You know, so uh, I'm excited to see where both guys go from here. Uh, I'm kind of worried about the uh, the Rochelle's next fight, though. Will he be over conservative now that the like the first fight that he got in the UFC, he's actually looking for the finish. He got clipped and he got nailed. Oh, by uh, Walt Harris, the a tall black dude, right? No, I'm talking about this fight when he get he got, oh. he got knocked out. I mean, this is the first. I mean, he really went for a finish and he got completely knocked out. Mm -hmm. Is that going to end up in the end kind of like holding him back from you know bringing his game to the next level? That's a good point. Fight. Yeah, that's a good point, and that's what I would like not to happen. You know, let's you know he may look to place some blame on on that style, which yeah. I would hope not. I mean, yeah, being boring, being taking guys down, lying on top of them, basically just not really doing much. I mean, in all three of those fights, it's not like he looks for heavy ground and pound or for a submission. He just lays on you. I mean, he's got that lay and pray. He's basically lay and pray to a T up until yeah. this past fight, and. um and uh, I, I hope that he will see that he was I, – I, like, I hope he looks at it like I did, that he was being successful, that he was he was winning that fight up until the moment he got caught. He just needs to find that, that balance. And I hope that he sees it. I hope his coaches tell him. Somebody tells him, you know, because he was doing all right. He just forced a little too much. You're right. And um, so hopefully for our sake, for his sake, he doesn't, you know, place blame on, on that style for the loss, you know. Not that style. I mean, the the fact that he was being aggressive, yeah, that, that's probably what you blame it on. That that's a mistake on what he was doing, not with what his what his overall game plan or or for lack of a better word of what it looked like. You know, I, I would just hope that he he's able to go home, look at it, say, hey, I was winning that fight, I just got caught. It happens. Let me tighten my game up, and then it won't happen next time. And then I might get a knockout. I might get a finish. And then I might get my name up there, you know. So hopefully that's how that's how he that's how he looks at it going back home. Yeah, I mean Rose Holt, he's obviously not the best technical striker. I think we can all agree to that. And he's a great wrestler. I think he just he got a little sloppy, just and got caught. What a guy like and him needs to do is tighten up his striking to 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 complement his wrestling. You yeah, know, kind of like how GSP does. Predominantly wrestle. He's a wrestler. He needs to predominantly use his wrestling. That's what won him these fights. And he needs to mix in his striking a little bit more. Because there's going to be situations where he can't take guys down. There's going to be guys he's not going to be able to take down. He's going to have to be able to strike and use that wrestling to, like, well, like you said, complement his, stri his striking to complement his wrestling. Yeah. We'll move on to the next fight. Uh, excited for both heavyweights. I think we can all agree. It was definitely one of the highlights of the card. Uh, we're moving out to the... Third to last fight of the card, uh, flyweight, Chico Camus versus Brad Pickett. And I told you so, Chris, so suck it. <laughs> if anybody listened to the last podcast, I called this fight. I said Chico was going to come down looking great. I thought, I thought that he would come down with the, the weight cut looking amazing. I knew he had the, the talent. I knew he had the striking. I knew he had the overall ability to get it done, and he got it done. It was a very close fight, though, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. You act like he dominated the fight. Like okay, I'm not acting like anything. Frankie, I'm acting like Frankie I was right on my call. How about that? I, no, no, no. I know you are. <laughs> but but who who dominated the fight? Who did I pick? I picked Mr. Frank Yeager, and I think he dominated. All right, we're not there yet. So how about Shish? How about that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. You were wrong. Take it like a man. Anyway. I was right. You were wrong. <laughs> you were wrong more. Just shut up. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> this what? I mean, yeah. What? For, all right. No, no, no. Okay, so me. If anybody listened to the last podcast, please feel free to listen to it on our archive page of sportsofanarchy.com. Listen to the last podcast. Me and you discussed that this card, this fight, the next fight, and the main event. I said Chico Camus, Edson Barboza, and Cub Swanson would win. You said Brad Pickett, Bobby Green, and Frankie Edwards would win. I called two of them, right? You called only one of them, right? I think we just agreed on the. I think we agreed on Benavides. I think. We yeah, we agreed on everything else. The top three card, the top three fights, we didn't. I I may have picked. Actually, no. You picked Jared Rolshaw, and I picked all in it. 
So I was I right play. three times out of four. I was right two out of four, I guess. And then, I what? mean, stuff happens. Stuff happens. Ollie Nick got that knockout, which was, I mean, that was a little suspect. No one thought he was going to win that fight. But I'll give it easy. <laughs> But I'll take I'll take Frank Yeager winning. Do you guys hear this right now? He's trying to take I'll away take that pick. Ye- you hear you that? Right Frank now? Yeager over Brad Pickett and Alexi Olenek every day. Uh huh. Uh huh. You guys hear this guy? He's trying to take away my. You know. How dare he? All right. Anyway. Oof, moving on. I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> well, for anybody. Okay, so um, uh, Adam, you didn't see this fight, did you? Chico Camus and Brad Pickett. This fight. This fight. I somehow missed it. I must have been dancing with people. Uh huh. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Jonas, what did you think of this fight? We watched it together. Chico Camus versus yeah, Brad Pickett. It was a close uh, fight. Brad Pickett got hurt pretty early. Got his nose busted up with that knee. Yeah. Uh, and that pretty much set the tone. Um, Pickett is starting to slow down. If I'm not, if, call me crazy, but Pickett's not the same guy he used to be. Uh huh. Uh, and I think that's what got Chico Camus to win. Yeah, and it's and for me it's it's you know looking at his record, he hasn't won any consecutive fights um, since 2012. You know what I mean? And uh, and that's when he first came into the UFC. Um, and uh, since then, now he's lost four of his last six. He's having a tough time. He's now on the on the cusp of a, of a two two fight losing streak and um, against Ian McCall, which isn't a bad loss, but Chico Camus, a guy who you know. Many people, I would say, would think that he was going to win. Chico Camus is a guy coming down from bantamweight. He's not a necessarily he's not a big guy, um, but especially at flyweight, he was a uh, he was he was a very uh, small guy. And so I was very happy to see him move down, and he looked great. He looked size wise, he looked he matched up well to to Brad Pickett. Strength wise, he was able to hold his own, and that was one of the bigger things that he had uh, bigger issues he had to deal with at bantamweight was he was getting muscled around. You know, and uh, in this fight, you didn't see that, and uh, and he, he really showed off what what talent he does have. Because whether or not Brad Pickett is slowing down, Brad Pickett is Brad Pickett, and he's a tough dude. And um, and that was a big win for Chico, especially making his his entrance into the division. Um, it says a lot about his skill, and and I knew that he had it, and I, and I was excited to see him win. Chris, what do you think? Um, I saw bits and pieces of this fight. I don't remember exactly why, uh, but I had to step away for like. A part of the fight, I saw a majority of it. It was close in some aspects, and then I mean, Chico did look good. He got the win. What else can I say? I didn't really get the full fight, and I should probably go back and watch it. But uh, just looking at the stats, there it was pretty close. It was a, it was split decision. I saw one judge oddly scored it thirty to twenty seven for Brad Pickett, but aside from that, yeah, yeah he needs Chico to get off the pipe. The win. Excuse me. That judge needs to get off the pipe. That's, that's oh, yeah, ridiculous. Probably. It was nowhere near that kind of a fight. And it was <laughs> the first, especially yeah. the first round, Jonas, if you recall, like he does, about, you know, he got hit with some hard shots in the first round, which me and him both gave Chico the first round cleanly. Um, from what I remember, I can believe Brad got the second and Chico took the third. Um, and, it, yeah, it was a close fight. It was an exciting fight. And for Chico Camus, what I would like to see next for him – is a is a good fight maybe like from 15 to 11 on the rankings just because you know he beat a guy that was ranked in the top 10 you know so I feel he should be in the rankings I think he is he is all right so he's now in the top 15 um he and I think now is his time right now because he's a talented dude he's around 30 now though so he he really needs to get that momentum and just stick with it and I think a a good fight for him Next would be, you know, another up-and-comer in his division right now just to kind of herd out the sheep and see where where both guys go. And I would like to see him fight Wilson Reyes, who's a, a Brazilian talent, who's a really good fighter. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I would like to see those two fight next. Jonas, what do you think? Yeah, Wilson Reyes would be a really good matchup there. Um, also, I wouldn't mind seeing Chico fight somebody like uh, – it's tough. <laughs> just like, is it a thing where you would just like to see him fight somebody really, you know, up there, up above, maybe pick it? Yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah, I mean, not? because I think not getting any younger. Yeah, I think you could put him uh, either against uh, Wilson Hayes, which is a good fight, and Wilson's just outside of the top fifteen, or 
the upcoming fight between uh, Kyoji Horiguchi and Louis Gadnow, you can give him the winner of that one, and that's in the beginning of January. Yeah, on UFC I mean, and too. those are two really skilled uh, flyweights. Louis Gadnow yeah, has had some struggles. Sense. Huh? They, yeah, both of those fights would make sense, and Horiguchi's on a pretty significant winning streak. He's 3-0 and in the UFC, so... Yeah, I personally, yeah, I think he's in the top ten to be honest, but you know, I don't do those MMA, the UFC rankings. But for yeah, anybody so that likes to see our opinions, go please go check out our MMA rankings on on the, on the sportsofanarchy.com website. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Wilson Reyes makes for a great fight. Uh, it, it, it's only mainly because he's another up and coming guy who looks hot right now. Got a finish in his last fight, two fight winning streak, three and three and one in the UFC. Um, and uh, it should be interesting to see where Chico goes from here. As for where, Pete, as for where Brad Pickett goes from here, it's tough, man. Like we said, he's 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 on. He seems to be on a decline. I don't like it. I am a fan of Brad Pickett, um, so it, it's tough to call where he goes from here. Um, but you know, if he does happen to stay, I think it's a matter of seeing if he can stick it out now with with the up and coming fighters, kind of like what Eves Edwards had to do. He was fighting some top names. Started losing and now he was given some uh, up and coming fighters, and, and then and, he, and and in this card was given a new guy in in Akbar Ariola who got the win, the finish against him, and so now it's a matter of having to see if he can if he can contend or compete with the up and coming guys. So I personally uh, would like to see him fight Justin Scoggins next, um, just to see where where Scoggins is, if he can handle that kind of a fight, and if Pickett can handle. Fighting the up and coming talent of this of, of this of his division. Yeah, it's not a bad fight either. Uh, Pickett is getting pretty old at 36. I don't know if you put him. Against, I mean, Scoggins is a bad fight just to give him a test, and Pickett still ranks, so it's a good fight for Scoggins just to get into the rankings because I do think he's really talented, and you can just see where Pickett is. Pickett might be on the verge of retirement soon, depending on what he wants to do at 36. He's not getting any younger, so definitely and. Um, We'll move on. With, we'll move on to the co-main event of the evening: the lightweight affair between Edson Barboza and Bobby King Green. And uh, I know that a lot of people were picking Bobby for certain reasons. I, I don't know what they are, <laughs> but I just see that Edson. He just seems to be firing up right now. And what I saw in this fight with Edson Barboza, I saw him. Uh, and I said, and I said, I was speaking this uh, earlier. He seemed to really improve off of that Cerrone fight. I say that because of the fact that he seemed to be more patient. He wasn't going – if you, anybody remembers the Cerrone fight from earlier this year, Cerrone you know, and Edson, they both meet in the middle, and they just started trading. And Barboza kind of went off, and he was just throwing wild strikes. He was he, – he didn't look as technical as he did in this fight. He seemed more patient. He didn't, he didn't force anything. He didn't go crazy. Um, other than maybe when he threw that wheel kick, but even then he kind of backed off and didn't allow himself to, you know, uh, get caught. You know, he didn't put himself in any dangerous position. And that whole fight, Edson was in control, I felt. Like. He didn't put himself in a single dangerous spot where Bobby could capitalize on, on, on getting points even. Um, and it was a clear 30-27 because of that. And, uh, and I thought it was a great fight as well from Edson. On Bobby's part, he didn't look that good. Uh, Jonas, what do you think? You know, Bobby let Edson Barboza beat him. And I don't say that because I'm a fan of uh, Bobby Green at all, but he just didn't control. He didn't assess any kind of control over that fight in any way. Uh, Barboza just had his way with him. He set the pace from start to finish. Uh, he was throwing stuff at uh, Bobby. Bobby was just happy to take the licks. Happy to take the licks and do more taunting than actual fighting. So uh, that's why Edson Barboza won. Adam, what do you think? Going along with that old taunting thing, it's just like, it's kind of weird coming off of him saying that this might be his last fight. There's something, up, just like, he wasn't firing. And like like we were saying earlier before we were on the air, with Barboza being so chinny lately, you expect someone like Green, who has a, you know, a good history of stoppages, to throw some punches and throw some kicks and try to tag that chin, which has been shown, to go at any moment. And he just didn't do it. He kept on saying, come, come, come. Barboza would come, and Green would do nothing about it. So what are you, what are you taunting for? If you're, you're going to taunt and do nothing after it, what are you doing? You're just wasting your time. Yeah. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Uh, I thought, I mean, it was just weird. Barboza, 
was coming forward. He was doing what he should be doing. And then Green was just talking. Every time he got hit, he would talk instead of fire back. And he just, I mean, I know a lot of things that have been going on in his personal life could have affected him in this fight, but just in general, he didn't look that good. He, I was surprised he didn't mix things up with his takedowns and stuff like that. And, yeah, he just, he looked kind of stale, I guess you could say. Yeah, I Like I said, I think Edson couldn't have looked any better. He looked more improved from the earlier fights that he had this year. And so... With that, I think it's good to see that he, he's 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 uh, he's sharpening up some uh, some tools, and I think that that makes for uh, an even more dangerous Edson Barboza. So he might he might look to have an even better year next year. Who knows? Yep. Um, Barboza does very well coming off of a loss. I will say that the last two losses, or the last the loss to Cerrone and the loss before, uh, forget who it was. Jamie Barner. Yeah, yeah. When he lost to Barner, shoot. The next fight, he's coming in a completely different fighter and getting it done. Yeah, and I mean, Edson is a young dude still. I don't think people realize that. I mean, he's only 28. He's barely hitting that prime level of of of, uh, of competition where he'll 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 feel at his best. Um, and yeah, I mean, he and like I said, yeah, with Jamie Varner, he went in there and he started, uh, you know, putting dudes down uh, like Lucas Martins and Rafael Oliveira um, after after the loss to Jamie Varner. And then now he 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 comes off a loss to Cerrone and beats two big name guys in Evan Dunham and Bobby Green and he looked uh, totally dominant against both guys. And so um, you know as far as who he fights next, I personally would like to see him fight a a top ranked guy this time. I want to see if you know he fought Donald Cerrone. That was a top ranked guy, but that he wasn't the top top ranked guy like Donald is now. Um, and so I'd like to see him take another crack at a top ranked guy. And so I, for me, I would like to see the maybe the loser of Ben Henderson and Eddie Eddie Alvarez. Yeah. Uh, I think that that uh, that those you know it makes the most sense only because uh, you know especially with one of those guys coming off a loss, they would definitely have something to prove. Plus, both guys are coming off a loss already. So when they whoever the loser would be that would face Edson said that should that fight happen, um, they would definitely have a. a a uh, fire streak going, and that would make for a very competitive opponent for Edson to face. And um, and I think that uh, whoever he fights between either of those two guys would be an amazing fight. Uh, Jonas, who do you? Who would you like to see him fight next? I think it's a shame that RDA is booked. If who? you get my drift. What'd you say? <laughs> I, I have, yeah, I'm I'm really kind of sad that RDA is booked because that would have been a good fight. Already, yeah, that would be a great fight. Well, that's only in a couple of weeks, though, yeah, uh, against yeah. Nate Diaz. That's not a, that's not a fight that's out of range of happening. No. Say, say, or, or, you know, if RDA either loses or wins, if, uh, I don't know what would happen depending on the state of lightweight yeah. division. Something we'll talk about another day, but it's not a fight that could not happen, definitely, because it's coming yeah, right up. That fight's in only two weeks, but I think if Dos Anjos wins that, I don't think Barbosa gets the fight. I think if Nate Diaz wins that, Barbosa could fight Nate Diaz next. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Because if RDA wins, he's getting a title shot. He, he might should. He's des- I would think he's deserving of it, yeah. I think a healthy Khabib deserves a title shot, to be honest. Before RDA? Yeah, definitely. Yes, but that's yeah. dependent on, on, on uh, Nurmagomedov. We still don't even know. He's not very um, – He's not very. he doesn't really talk you know, about his injuries. We don't know anything. Nobody reports on it. So as far as we know, yeah. he's still injured and still out of it. So. If RDA yeah. can get another win in there before uh, before Nurmagomedov announces that he's healthy and ready to go, then yeah, I mean he probably would get the next top shot. So, yeah. and that's not a matter of the rankings; that's just a matter of how how the game goes sometimes. Yep. Um, Adam, what do you think? Who who would you like to see Barbosa fight next? I was down for that uh, Alvarez Henderson loser matchup just because that that's another fight that's like guaranteed to be something that's exciting. That's sure. you know, yeah. I'm all about the matchups that, that are good against each other more than, you know, the rankings are so weird. They seem like they make them up on the spot. So I don't really care about the UFC rankings too much. <laughs> you get you get a fight that can get people interested and get people watching, get people talking. That's what matters to me. And a fight like that could get people watching, get people talking. For sure. And fight fans, let's be real. If you want to look at some real actual Rankings that make sense. Go to sportsofanarchy.com. Check out our rankings. We don't mess around. We're, 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 say that again. I don't even know what he said. What'd you say? Shameless plug. Yeah. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Chris, who would you like to see Edson Barboza fight next? 
I just said if the if Nate Diaz beats Dos Anjos, I think Nate Diaz can make friends. Oh, that's right. Minutes. That is right. Um, yeah, I mean, well, that's a, uh, as far as Edson goes, we know where he's going. He's going nowhere but up right now. He looks hot. He's on fire. Bobby Green, man, I don't know. It's it's weird to, to, to say about him right now, and, and it's only and we can only really speculate on that until we know if he's coming back to fight again because per, he's had a lot of personal issues. For anybody that doesn't know, he lives in an area that I live close by, and I understand what he means by it. He lives in an area where there's a lot of gang violence. There's a lot of stupid, you know, this, for lack of a better way of saying it, there's stupid shit that goes on between some people in the in the area that he lives in. And uh, he's lost. Uh, he lost a brother now, and another brother got shot, and it's, um, just recently this year, and that's horrible. That's very horrible. And 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 for him to have to go into a, a a cage with that on his mind, you know, I would think more than anything, it's just best he takes some time off. For me, um, it makes the most sense for him. I think that um, if he can take some time off, think about it, see if if coming back is really what he wants to do. If it's what he wants to do, if it's what's best for him, um, then 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 good on him. But I just think he needs to take some time away. It's definitely a big personal hit for him. And so for Bobby Green, I just think he needs to take some time off. With that yeah, being said, uh, yeah. the way he fought, just the way he fought uh, uh, Barboza, that he clearly did not want to win. It just didn't seem that he came that he showed up to fight. Yeah, he wasn't there. That, yeah. He wasn't there to win. Yeah, he was just there to collect a check. So, yeah, I mean, and so against Bobby, I understand what he's going through. I, not that I understand, but I can understand how things like that can affect him. But he, he's not about fighting right now. Yeah, if he's not about fighting. He doesn't need to do it. For sure, he needs to take the time, then come back or decide if he even wants to. With that, we'll uh, we'll move on to the main event, the the highest topic of discussion here: Frank Yeager versus Cub Swanson. And man, I know a lot of people had it going for Cub, or I mean for Frankie. Uh, I nobody expected the 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 degree of 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 um, ass kickery that went on in that fight. I mean, uh, Cub looked good starting off. He landed some shots, not significant shots, but a couple of good shots. And then just after he got taken down the first time, it was you know it was game over. It was just no, no coming away. It, you could just you could almost see it after the first takedown. Frankie just took over that fight from from nearly start to finish and got up got and now has the latest uh recorded finish in all in in uh, UFC history and will probably remain that for the remainder of his career for the long time to come because it's hard to really get another finish in in those 4 seconds at the very end of a 5 min, uh, 5 uh round fight tremendous fight and what's What's funny is that, and and even though it's obvious, nobody talked about uh, about Frankie possibly getting a title fight after that fight. And the reason being is because Frankie Yeager's Frankie Yeager. You kind of just get a gauge on how he fights and what he does. And he got that also even more so in the fight with Jose Aldo. But now he actually looks better, like loads better. Like he looked amazing yes, in that fight. It not. I mean, he set up his striking to complement his wrestling in the best way. He would set it up, put some punches on him, and then, man, he would stick it in on his hips, and the Cub was just couldn't, couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. It was an insane performance. It was one of the best performances of the year that I've seen. Um, next to, like, I would say it's second behind TJ Dillashaw. It was that good. And, and and while I wanted Cub to win, you can't take anything away from Frank Yeager. That was one of the best performances I've ever seen this year. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Uh, I thought that could have possibly been Frankie's best performance of his career, despite being a former champion. Definitely. He, just, he went in there. I mean, at first, there was a little bit of exchange on the feet, nothing really too much. And then he took Cub down, and he's like, oh, wait, I can take this guy down at will. Just went in there, took him down. And Cub's no slouch on the ground. He's a black belt. And Frankie just neutralized everything Cub wanted to do from the bottom. He just was passing, doing everything he could, and he fin- he got the finish at the end. Yeah, and compliments I mean, to um to to Frankie's corner because in the first round Cub got taken down, but he was able to push him off. He was able to get the butterfly guard, and he used uh and he used uh, proper technique and got himself out of there. And then his coaches they sat him down. If you listen in in between rounds one and two. 
his coaches gave him the right, correct, uh, correct uh, direction on how to avoid getting pushed off like that, on how to fight off the butterfly guard, and he adjusted accordingly. And Cup couldn't get him off him after that. After that, yeah. it was just game over. You know. I mean, Frankie, yeah, Frankie just went and dominated, landed a bunch of strikes from the top. He was very aggressive from the top too, and he did a lot of passing. He didn't just stay in Cup's guard or in the half guard or anything like that. He passed him out a lot. He passed side control. Had a lot of striking in uh, from ground and pound, and he just he looked great. I think I don't know what they're gonna have for him next, but it's either gonna. I mean, I don't think they're gonna give him the title shot unless Conor McGregor loses. But I don't know what else they have for him next. Jonas, what do you think? All right, a couple things. Uh, that <laughs> was Frankie Edgar's best fight ever, as stated earlier by Mr. Paglucia. Pagluka, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go over this later, and then, you know, the next podcast, we're just not going to get it wrong. I'm going to break it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was his best fight I've ever seen. Um, I used to think of Frankie as, I mean, he, he's a good fighter, but he's, he was never an exciting fighter to me. But that fight against uh, Cub Swanson was very exciting. Those transitions were at a blinding pace. Oh, my God. He was just killing him on the ground. This is the second effort he was putting into those takedowns. It was just off the charts. So, uh, Frankie, I don't – Dana won't see it. You know, Lorenzo won't see it. But he earned a title shot. He beat the man that was guaranteed the title shot on the win. So, he earned it. He earned the title shot. He should be rematching uh, Jose Aldo. Adam, what do you think? So, first off, his ground and pound it seemed to have a lot of emphasis that it didn't have before. Yeah, that's another thing that he improved on. Like that's uh, uh, to speak on his improvement, he looked great everywhere and more improved everywhere. Go ahead, sorry. And even with, I mean, I think he realized that his striking isn't something that you should try to win on. His striking is similar to like Bisping in the fact where they're bouncing around so light on the feet, they're never going to get a lot of power on those strikes. Just the way the way they stand, the way they move, not getting a lot of power on it. So he's using it much better. Like you know. To, to distract and get their hands up and open up the takedown. Like you were saying, he's using his strike set up the takedown. I think he's realizing he's not going to win on a striking. The, the Aldo fight is a perfect example of the striking is good, he's not going to win on it. So if he can, like, I don't, I don't know if it's still enough to beat Aldo, it's a discussion for a different day, but is is this different from using his striking to set up the wrestling correctly and his ground and pound being leaps and bounds better than ever has been? He's a much scarier fighter because I don't think anyone was ever really scared to fight Frank Yeager before. People should start being worried now. Oh yeah, Chris, we or Chris, we already asked. Never mind. <laughs> as far as for what I see in this fight, I I from what I took away from this fight, I took that Frankie is still on a competitive high. He's not. He's not straying away from trying to just be, okay, I had the belt, I fought for another belt, maybe that might have been it. You know, He's like, no, send me in there with your best guys, I'm going to put them away, and then I'm going to get that title shot, and I'm going to get that belt. He's still got a great mindset on it, on, a great head on his shoulders right now uh, for being as experienced and veteranized as he is. He's still uh, going in there, and you know he had a he had a rough streak in 2012 and 2013, losing to Ben Henderson twice and Jose Aldo. Whether you agree with whether those were losses or wins, they were three losses in a row, realistically. And he had to bounce back from that, and he has. He's beaten, you know, he beat Oliveira, BJ Penn, and now simply his best performance against his uh, against the toughest opponent he's faced at featherweight in Cuff Swanson, um, next to Jose Aldo. Um, he just dominated that guy, put him away, and, and looked great doing it all throughout. I mean, there was never a been, you know, there was never a minute where you said, "Okay, stand him up." He was on him, and he was beating the hell out of him. He was, there, it, it was like we said earlier. We I mean, can't speak enough about it. He was, it was his best performance. And uh, we'll speak more on if he deserves a title shot because we got some fan questions we're going to answer here to close out the to close out what's been a very interesting podcast uh, and I've, one that I've enjoyed because this card was great all together and um, and so we'll go to some fan questions. You guys up for that? Yeah. All right, let's do it. First one from uh, Ashley Hernandez. Where do you see the UFC strawweight division in a year after this finale? And for anybody that doesn't know, she's talking about the tough, the Ultimate Fighter Season 20 finale that has featured all straw weights. If you haven't been watching the Ultimate Fighter, uh, it's been a great season as far as fights go. It's been a wildly season as far as these women acting crazy. 
but I have enjoyed the season thus far. Uh, which one of you, uh, out of you three, who's actually watched this, uh, The Ultimate Fighter this far? Not me. Who said not me? Adam, probably? Yeah, shocking, right? No, not at all. Okay, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I've watched it. You've watched it. All right, Jonas? I know you've seen bits and pieces, I think. Yeah, that's about it. About it. All right. Well, then me and Chris will try and get more into that. Um. For, for as far as for what I see, like I and we spoke on it earlier, uh, Paige Van Zant, a very very welcome addition to the uh, yeah. to to the to the, the strawweight division, and you know it almost it's, what she did in this fight. She wasn't a quick backstory on her. She's twenty, and she wasn't allowed to enter the Ultimate Fighter. She was supposed to be on the season, um, but she's twenty years old, so she can, you have to be twenty one to be on that show, at least in America, and so. For that, she wasn't able to get on the show. Was given a contract still, and was given the opportunity that she that she uh, that she had this past weekend, uh, past Saturday, and 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 took and and looked great against Caitlin Curran. And I think it worked out better for her that way. She got she got to go in there before all these other women, and and and, and just show that the strawweight division is coming. I mean, you, you can argue that only because hey, say what if she won the tournament? And but that's a very big if, you know. And if anybody's watched this season. There have been tremendous fights. These women have, I I would say that uh, that that division, um, one fifteen for women is basically like welterweight for women because it's it's you just see so much talent, so much better technique. You see a lot of uh, uh, aggression from these women. It's it's a really good division and and it speaks volumes from this 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 season of the Ultimate Fighter. And even seeing it from this uh, this this star to be in Paige Van Zandt, and even Kaylin Curran, she looked great, even in defeat. Um, you know, there, she had her moments in that fight, and you know, she made some mistakes, but she's another uh, fighter who who I can't wait to see again when she gets in there. And as far as everybody else that has been on this show, um, on the Ultimate Fighter 20, I, I for anybody that's seen it, uh, we won't really talk about what's going on through it until the finale comes on, but uh, it's looking great. Thus far, the fights are exciting. If you haven't seen them, go watch them on uh, UFC Fight Pass or, or any plug-in or any way that you can, except for streams. We don't endorse that. <laughs> um, but as far as I'm concerned, in a year, I would say that the strawweight division will have surpassed the bantamweight division in excitement. As far as fights go, maybe not in, 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 in title fights. I think maybe the title could be switched around a lot. But... Uh, it has that potential because of the competition that's in this division. You don't see somebody, you know, dominating people like Ronda Rousey, um, you know, except maybe Cardo Esparza, but even then she's having some tough fights. But, uh, you know, you never know. And um, I think in a year it, it will look – it will be a really well-established division, even with not having as many fighters as, as, it, sh as it could have because it, it, it's only going to be a year from now. That's the question. Um I think it will be a great division. I think it'll be a division that everybody gets up for to watch, and uh, I th I'm excited for it. Chris, what do you think? I think you comparing it to the Walter White division is a tad bit much. I mean, right, the fine. Walter White division is one of the most established divisions in the oh. UFC, and I'm talking as far as talent goes, not as established because yeah, it's no, not I, definitely. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't think the talent level is anywhere near. And it's because it's a new division. I'm talking, but when I say that, I speak in volumes as opposed to other women's divisions. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, because there aren't as many of them, so I guess that does make yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm talking about to, uh, not comparing them to the men because that's unfair. You got to compare them to other women's divisions, and when you do yeah, that, I, I 115 saying, looks um, like the best one. I mean, yeah, I I think that's so not based strictly off talent. I think it's just because there's it's a closer the fights are closer. These girls are all comparable in talent for, in the top of the division where Definitely. in women's band of weight, the top girls are the top girls and Ronda's basically unbeatable at this point. She hasn't even looked, no one's been close to beating her really. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing. And I do agree where, I don't know who's going to win the show. There aren't really many girls left. I think Carla's a big favorite to win. You have uh, Rose, Joanne and girls like that. But I don't know if, if the, I, I think the title can change hands a lot here because just because of the Ultimate Fighter format where a lot of times you'll see people win the show and then they'll be either much better off the show or much worse off the show. Or sometimes it's it, they do coincide where the winner is the best person off the show, but sometimes that doesn't happen just because of 
they have to fight so often, they have to be closer to weight, and just little uh, things that come into play on the Ultimate Fighter. So yeah, I do think the talent level is a lot closer here, so I think the title can change hands maybe once or twice within the next year, or who knows, maybe the best person comes out on top and they hold on to it. Yeah, and that's a, that's a cool thing to see how unpredictable this division is, especially if you've watched this season. There have been some women who weren't, you know, who weren't such big names, such as Ronda, Ronda Marcos, um, uh, at, for example. And she's come in and she's looked great for anybody that's already watched. She's already beaten two big names ranked above her in Tisha Torres and Felice Herrick. And those are two big names. And she go, she's gone in there and she's beaten both of them. And so that's the, that's the surprising thing is that this division has so many surprises in store. And, and, and in a year, who knows what else it can surprise us with. So I'm excited. Um, we'll move on to the next question, uh, right. and this is where we can start having long. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Who's waiting me? Me, Adam. Adam, all right, what? I mean, like, sure, I haven't watched a lot of the show, but I, I know uh, quite a bit of the the one. All right, fine then, dude. What do you got? Fine. Go ahead. I mean, first off, as far as like y'all were talking about with the show and, and the best fighter might be better or worse. It's kind of, this season's kind of an anomaly because every fighter besides a couple of them were already established fighters before they went on the show. Not all of them. So I think we know what we're going to get as they come off the show because we know what they've been doing before and they've been on a big stage before. So we've seen them perform usually regularly. Um, but as far as the 115 division, it, it's going to be the most exciting division in, in women's MMA and probably the third or fourth in MMA in general, honestly. Mm -hmm. the, the, the 115 girls, they bring it every time. They're striking. They don't have, like, the knockout power, but their speed, their technique, their fluidity is amazing. I, I've yet to find a, a 115 fighter that's, you know, one-sided, can't fight one way, but only can fight the other way, you know? So, I mean, like you were talking about, you know, they're, they're dynamic, to use the word that Mike Goldberg would use all the time describing the lightweights. So as far as 115, it's going to be very exciting. It, Carla's the best fighter right now, but who would say... Is that going to be the same thing in a year? No. Like like, like uh, Chris Bogluga said, there's one fighter in some divisions that are way above the rest. This is one of them. This is going to be a back and forth. The title's going to be there, here, there, here. And it's, it's going to be fun to watch for a long time. Yeah. Good plug. All right. Next question. Um, move on. This is a really long debated question, especially now uh, by um, – Brian Newton from MMA Discussion. Who do you see as the next contenders for each division? Now, that's a very loaded question because there's a lot of freaking divisions nowadays. So we'll just go for the ones that don't have title fights right now. Um, right now, we already know uh, Bantamweight is going to have D D uh, Dominic Cruz and TJ Dillashaw. Uh, as far as flyweight, who's who would you say it's flyweight? Well, just go through them by weight class and just go we'll go by weight class but what we'll do is we'll go for ones that don't have title fights right now um you know i mean maybe we can speak on uh you know for ones that we don't know coming after the title fight like for light heavyweight we know that dc is the next fight and we know that the winner of anthony johnson and alexander gustafson is the next fight after that so it's not it's yeah. not like we need to discuss that one too much all right so um, where but do you want to start from? We'll start with flyweight, and fl mainly because that's probably the most questionable one, and that's not even because it's anybody's fault other than Demetrius Johnson, because that's clean in house. Yeah. Um, I, it seem it would seem because recently uh, Ian McCall versus John Lineker got rebooked for UFC 183. That seems like the next fight that could put up the next uh, the the next contender, and that's you know and. and I think that that makes sense more so if John Lineker wins, yeah, um, and makes weight. I don't think he should get a title shot if he doesn't make weight for this fight and wins. Um, uh, that's just my opinion, but um, I would say that that's the next uh, uh, guy. What do you think, Jonas? Um, if not John Lineker winning on uh, Ian McCall, uh, John Dodson. John right. Dawson, yeah, that would be yeah. a ways away though because he's injured. But uh, yeah. that that yeah. that already sounds like the fight that makes the most sense for that, because uh, you know, he's earned it for sure since coming off the loss to DJ. He's just been on a tear, so um, definitely, um, Chris. Yeah, I agree. I think the winner of McCall Lineker will probably get it since Dawson's on the shelf right now. Yeah, uh, Adam. Um, you know, other than. Other than Dodson, you know, 
it, it's going to be the winner of that one fight. But I mean, you know, you got to look at Benavidez as, a, as, a, as an option soon too. Even though he had, even though he's been beaten by the champion twice, if he keeps knocking off these contenders, you can't deny him. All right, we'll move on to probably the most debated one, <laughs> which is featherweight. Cause Feather, yeah. Oh man, that's just a. I mean, for me, let's. I'll just say it, Frankie Edgar. I would like to see Frankie Edgar get the next title yeah. shot. Um, I'm with Frankie Edgar. Conor Conor McGregor does not deserve a, a title shot over winning uh, against Dennis Seaver if that happens. It, it just it's not merited on that fight. Adam, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean. You know I'm against Edgar getting repeated title shots. He's earned this one. I, the, I, you can't you can't justify giving it to someone else unless it's a money grab and business decision. That's it. Chris, uh, here's what I gotta say. I think obviously Frank Edgar has the better resume here, and but what I think is gonna happen is Conor McGregor with the win over Dennis Seaver will get the shot. The UFC's profits are down 40% from last year due to all the injuries and cards falling off and just the oversaturation in the sport. They need a fight like McGregor. They need someone like McGregor to get a title shot, and I think that's what's going to happen as long as he beats Dennis Seaver. If not, Frankie will probably get the shot. I, I, I just I don't see that. I don't see where, especially coming up, where the pay-per-view business looks like it's going to boom for the next couple of months with – Cards like 181, 82, 83, and 84. But well, what happens if there's injuries? Um, yep. Bingo. Well, that's a big what if, but you can't just yeah, – you, you can't make can't business decisions as soon. You know? you can't yeah, two out. out of the last three years have been wrecked by injuries, 2012 and this year. Yeah. yeah. And the UFC, it just came out. They're down 40% profit from last year this year. Uh, hmm. And the pay-per-view business for fights these days, they're built around one fight. You pay to see a main event, and the rest of the cards are built around that. Yeah. And and this year the biggest issue was the loss of a lot of main events. So, uh, I don't know. I it, for me it's it's more of a thing that I got to think about. But I've personally see Frankie Edgar as the most deserving. I've never felt like it's okay for the 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 white collar way of working to beat the blue collar way of working, especially in a sport like cage fighting. So I don't like that a guy can be who's more profitable. I guess. Only not only in that because he's he's exciting to watch as well, but not. And but he's won. Yeah, he has won, but you know, I mean, and he's won spectacularly in a lot of his fights. It's not like he's just. It's not like Chael Sonnen where he gets a fight against John Jones after losing. Uh, that's it's true. It's a lot different. We'll still see. I then. say, I say, if Conor McGregor fights anybody after Seaver, it should be Chad Mendes. Chad Mendes himself wants that fight. That There's a lot of people that want to fight Connor. That um. <laughs> I I don't think they're just thinking how the UFC is probably thinking. I think if Connor wins, he's definitely getting the next shot. Especially if he, I think they're hoping now because of the way Frankie won that he wins in spectacular fashion. So everyone will just be like, oh, you got to get this guy a title shot, and they can do it right away. So people don't start thinking, oh, wait, what about Edgar? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it definitely, I guess maybe it does come down to that, that performance. And it's not even that it comes down to that to that performance of whether he, or I mean, whether it comes down to it, whether it's a win or not, if it comes down to his performance. Because say he does win, but say it's some lackluster way, like he, like he's a, like a, he just doesn't show the exciting uh, way of fighting that he has thus far since he's entered the UFC. And then Edgar, you know, and then people start pulling for Edgar to get that shot. I would hope that Edgar gets it either way. Um, but, yeah, it does seem to cling on to the fact that Connor will be fighting Dennis Seaver. And I guess we have to wait until that fight happens. Me personally, I'd like to see Frankie. I think he's earned it at this point. I think he's uh, improved his skill and he's proven it. And, um, and I, I would just like to personally see that fight next. We'll move on. I think uh, lightweight would be next. And that's more of a... That's a tough one only because, you know, I mean, we, I think we unanimously agree here that Khabib is the next guy that should, should get that title shot, right? But yeah, say he's hard. still injured, um, then who? I think it would come down to if Rafael Dos Santos – or Rafael Dos Santos, excuse me, beats uh, Nate Diaz. I think that that's the guy, guy next in line. Uh, Jonas, what do you think? Yeah, I've already said it. RDA gets it if uh, Khabib doesn't come back quick enough. Adam? Yeah, I mean, you guys said it all. I really got nothing to add to that. Chris? 
Yeah, I also agree with that. But here's a weird situation. What happens if Khabib's still out, Dos Anjos loses? Who do you bring in then? I think it might be Donald Cerrone. Yeah, yeah I'm that, with you on that. Dude. Especially, he has no fights lined up as, as far as I know. Right? He has a fight lined up against Miles Jury. Oh, that's right. Miles Jury at the boxing yeah, card. Right. Uh, if Cerrone wins that, that fight, then yeah. If Dos Anjos loses to Nate Diaz, Khabib's still out, and Cerrone wins that fight, I think he's next. I'm, I'm 100% behind that. Yeah, uh, I mean, Donald, Donald Cerrone. Had an amazing year. I, yeah. I've, I've had him down for fighter of the year for a while. Yeah, he's up in mind, too. Mm hmm. Uh, I personally think that if Donald wins his next fight, he he could just ask for a title shot, and he would probably get it. He's got the fan following. He's got the exciting style. Um, you know, but then again, like, think about this. What if RDA loses, and then Donald loses, and then I think that they would just wait until Khabib's healthy and then probably give him the shot. Um, yeah, probably Pettis that. has been so inactive that I, I, Pettis is saying he wants to fight a lot. Just, if he could stay healthy and he meets Gil... I don't know. There's a lot of situations at lightweight that could take place. Yeah, so I guess I mean, we just gotta wait. That I mean, because Anthony's been out for so long, that division has just been formating, as you'd say. And it's so so much yeah. that there's there's so many factors now, and who could be next for the shot? You know what I mean? Um, so it's it's definitely, and I can't wait for this upcoming fight with Pettis and Gilbert Melendez. That's a great fight. Um, whether you think he deserves it or not, Gilbert's a game dude, and so. Um, uh, I'm excited to see that fight for sure. We'll move on to Walter Wait. We had oh uh, well actually we already know who's gonna fight. We already or fight the next uh champion, which would be Robbie Lawler and Johnny Hendricks. That fight going down next Saturday and and we already know who will be fighting that uh that after. And that'll be Roy McDonald. Roy McDonald. Roy yeah. Mickey D's, yep. That's and uh and and let's let's kind of just talk about how that fight how what which fight would ra would we rather see at least I personally would like to see Robbie Lawler win only so that it could set up a possible trilogy fight between those three because those three guys when they fight man it's just fun to watch you know what I mean I would love to see a third fight and I'm a fan of both Robbie and Johnny so I don't really care who wins that fight I just would like to see a great fight between two of the best guys in the game for sure. Yeah, I was actually there at the first match. You were at one, you, one. Yeah, I was at yeah. one seventy one, and uh, that fight was awesome. Uh, Johnny won. I, I think there might have been a little bit of home cooking involved there. And <laughs> I mean, not, nothing against Johnny. Nothing against Johnny at all. He fought a great fight, but I think there might have been a little home cooking that swayed the judges a little. And I, I think know. he was also owed because of his performance on GSP. They they felt bad for him. They needed to give him something. So. I think you need to calm down, Jonas. I disagree. I think, <laughs> I think Johnny won three of the five rounds. It yeah, same here. Decision. He did. Most people he did. did see him winning that fight. Adam? Hey, we're talking about the Hendrick Lawler fight. I mean, I th that fight can go either way. Um, Hendricks came out with a different style last time, you know, with the volume punching. If he you know, puts power on his punch again, it's going to be interesting. Um, I I could see either one of those three either the belt switching hands a lot or Rory more than anyone. I could see him being kind of a long term champion. Nothing to the extent of GSP, obviously. He just doesn't seem to have that fire in him. But uh, it's gonna be interesting between those three. I could see it being like a uh you know a, a hot potato situation. I personally like. I I think. That Horry has what it takes to beat Robbie. I don't think he can beat Hendricks. I don't. I don't think he can beat Hendricks. I think Hendricks is. I mean, because one of Horry, uh, Horry, Rory's big thing, Rory, biggest Rory. things. <laughs> I can't get this dude's name right. If anybody remembers, I remember our first Ronald episode. <laughs> I called him Ronald McDonald, which is bad. It's so bad. <laughs> so bad. Anyway, um, Rory McDonald. I see him. Uh, he he likes to mix up his game, which is great. He does it well against almost everybody. I don't see him being able to do it that well against Johnny, especially a guy that's shorter, a guy that can get in on him with takedowns, a guy that he would have a – I would think he would have a hard time taking a guy like Hendricks down, even contending with him on the feet as well. So especially with a guy with Hendricks' speed who can get in and out the way he can. Well, not maybe out, but he can get in pretty fast. Um 
I, I, feel, I see him having a very tough time with a guy like with Guy Kendricks. But I do see, even though that they fought before and Lawler won, I do think that Corey can beat Robbie, especially in a five round fight. And he and I think he can also, as he as as I think some would say, he's improved since that fight. So, um, for, as far as speaking on on who he, on what he can do in both of those fights, uh, that's what I think. Uh, this next fight we will preview next Saturday, is, and, I, and I, I'm excited for it. As uh, another division that's very exciting, that uh, you know that we that um, w- would definitely be a hard thing to talk about is because um, uh, the middleweight division with you know Chris Weidman as champion, he will be fighting Vitor Velport at the Staples Center in Los Angeles at UFC 184. Um, and then behind that, man, you got a stack of killers coming after that that, that dude. Because uh, you got Jacare Souza, you got Leota Machida, possibly again. You have probably in front of him Luke Rockhold, um, a really, really, really well. Like I don't know how to say it, but it's 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 a killer's row of guys right now. A lot of depth. A lot of depth. That's and and it didn't have that before. You know, when Anderson was yeah. champion throughout a long period of his reign, there wasn't a lot of depth. And now yeah. there is, and so Chris got a hands full, man. And Vitor is no no joke as well. That's gonna be a great fight. As for who gets the next title shot, hmm. We, right now, we as far as let's look at middleweight middleweight matchups that are going on right now. We have Jacare Souza and Joel Romero, and Joel Romero is is like one of those wild card guys. You know what I mean? Because he's uh he's won five straight now in the UFC. Four of them finishes. Um. And you have and you have uh, Jacare Souza, who's undefeated in the UFC, has beaten guys like Musasi, who if and, and Adam will agree with me, I believe anyone that beats Musasi the way that Jacare beat Musasi, that is a huge win. That is an insane win because I don't, you have to really appreciate how good Musasi is to understand that that finish was gigantic for Souza. No one stops Musasi. So that's that's one of the big reasons. Uh, much less submits a guy as skilled as he is yeah. on the ground. And um, I personally think if Jacare can beat Yoel Romero, he gets the next shadow shot. So that's my pick. Jonas, what yeah. do you got? I'm with that. Um, I have wanted to see Jacare Rocco rematch, mm-hmm. but it doesn't line up on their schedules too much. But uh, Jacare is on a chair. He, he's got to be next. What I would like to see next, um, and it could set up for maybe the next contender after Jacare, what I would like to see, if Leona Machida beats C.B. Dalloway, or even if C.B. Dalloway beats Machida, because Machida's Rockhold. already fought for the title, winner of that fights Rockhold. I think that makes yeah. sense. That um, could work. Yeah. I think Jacare, if you beat, uh, the winner of Jacare Romero gets it after the Vitor Weidman plays out, and then you know, Rockhold versus Machida Dalloway, the winner of that would probably get the next one. Yeah. Uh, so as far as that goes, Jacare, if he beats Yoel, but then say this: What if Yoel beats Jacare? That makes him six and zero. You give her all. You give him the shot. Give him the shot next. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't disagree with it. I I do think there may be some people that will, but I mean, yeah, cause unless they give it straight to. Rockwell, what do you think about? I yeah, but I was gonna say, what do you think about just giving it straight to? Rockwell? And let's be real, guys. That's another guy who Chris has yeah. talked about it. Guy who, who's creeping up on Fighter of the Year. Three wins, yeah. three finishes. Three tough, tough guys in Costas Philippou, Michael Bisping, and Tim Bosch. Uh, and he just had his way with all of those guys. And um, you know, so, I mean, if, say, Yoel Romero wins, maybe he gets one more fight after that, and then you just give it a rock hold. About, Adam? Oh, one second. All right. Well, Chris, what do you think of that? Wait, what were you, what were you talking about? Uh, we, I was saying, say, Yoel Romero beats uh, Jacare. I would say maybe he gets – I wouldn't be uh, argumentative at all if he gets the title shot. But would, say Yoel Romero uh, beats Jacare, maybe give him one more fight and then give the title shot to Luke, I also wouldn't argue that as well. Luke Rockwell is one of those weird guys where it's like <laughs> – Maybe he doesn't look like a fighter, but I've never been sold on him. I know he's good. But I've he looks like a model. He looks <laughs> He's a surfer, and he looks like a surfer. He doesn't look like a fighter, so maybe I don't take him as seriously because of that. But I, <laughs> <You> I dork. <laughs> give it to Romero over Rockwell, but I gotta say, like, since the Pride merger, this is the first time Middleweight's been exciting. You mean Strike Force? No, the Pride merger. Middleweight was not exciting 
until like after the Pride merger. And then oh, I, I get what you're saying now. And then it's yeah. yeah. They brought in Henderson and a couple of the other 83 pounders they were in Japan. I mean, the whole champion was champion thing. You had a couple of the new contenders, but it dried up quickly. Now we have a bunch of contenders, which is weird because Anderson beat everybody except for except for Weidman. You know. It, it, it's fun to watch for the first time. It, it's, it's kind of the, the, the ups and downs of having a dominant champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I respect Rockhold so much. Just he, The guy, is, he's a tough guy. He beat Jacare. He's beaten, he was the strike force champion, and he's basically one of the best guys in MMA right now, in my opinion. And I think he beats almost everyone in the division. I don't know. I think he needs maybe one more win just over the Machida Dalloway winner, possibly, but... I think he's close to a title shot. Definitely. I think all those guys are. Yeah, I definitely agree with that also. Uh, I like to look at how fighters respond to a loss. And the way that Rocco lost to Belfort, I mean, that could have been very disheartening. But he, he just realized he got caught with a kick and he got his shit together and made it happen. He's been on a tear. Yeah, definitely. That's it. That's another thing I don't think people talk about. The guy came back. You know, He took a kick. He got knocked the hell out. Came back and... You know, he looks great. Not a lot of people can do that. And that's, that's a testament to his mental, you know, to his mental game. You know how tough it is. So middleweight looking exciting. Uh, just like, uh, just like lightweight and, 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 um, and featherweight are right now. Very exciting division. Light heavyweight we can skip. We already know what the deal is there. Heavyweight, last one, uh, of this question. That's a tough one. Because we already know Fabrice over Doom. Uh, faces Cain Velasquez uh, when he comes back. Hopefully it'll be in the spring. Uh, knock on wood, Cain comes back. You know, um, as far as I who think, would be after that, that's a tough one. Especially, I think when, it's a little bit. It's kind of simple in some ways, just because it depends on who wins. Though, if you have, if we're Doom beats Cain, there's so many possibilities. But I think the biggest thing is going to be if Stipe beats JDS. If Stipe beats JDS, you could throw him right in there. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I think with that. that if there was a – if, say, Miocic loses, though, you have Junior Dos Santos, say, Kane wins. Um, yeah, that, that's where it comes – that's where it's tough. Yeah, that's where that's, that's where I was thinking that, you know, what do you do after that? And then um, and then you look at the division, and that's, that's, that's a very tough question. <laughs> that, it's like everyone's beating everybody. Yeah, well, I mean, see, that's the thing that I spoke of earlier where I'm glad to see guys like Rochelle and all in it coming up and, and, you know, making a name for themselves. I don't know what will happen after that. That's a that's a very crap position to have. And, and, yeah, and you still have Travis Brown up there who just came off a loss, and he's fighting Brendan Schaub next, and I don't know if, if someone Schaub's comes down and fight him, they can be back up in there. Is Schaub even ranked in the UFC? No, he's, I know he's, he's not ranked with us. Ranked. But I thought he beat Arlovsky when they fought, and uh, he, if he wouldn't have lost that Arlovsky fight, he'd still be ranked, and he'd probably be much higher ranked than he I was. I will say that, yeah, I think Arlovsky uh, didn't beat him. Uh, I thought that was a Yeah, Arlovsky thing. won. Yeah, Arlovsky won that fight, but I don't think he won that fight. I think that, won that fight. That fight sucked. That fight it was horrible. Suck, right? yeah, yeah, everybody so lost. Bad. Everybody and their mother lost I mean, that fight. It was bad. At least he's getting a top fight coming back, so he has another chance to prove himself. <laughs> yeah, but I think Travis Brown, you know, curb stomps him. Uh, I I think that you know Travis Brown wins that upcoming fight because it's not uh, when is that fight? It's on oh it's on the Fox card, card correct? It's upcoming card no one eighty one. Oh it's on oh, okay so yeah see so I think that creates some time. Title fight. That gives that gives a guy like Travis Brown some time then to you know get that win and then maybe fight one more time. Uh, say I don't know, maybe the winner of Strew or, or or Overeem even though you know you think about that and you're like hmm. But at the same, oh well, he actually already beat Drew, huh? Uh, everybody's beating everybody, Adam. I don't know what to say. Yeah, like a fish. Uh, no. Yeah. It's so hard. This is definitely another hard one. Uh, especially when you, you look. Can't at... rule out the possible return of Black 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 Lesnar either. Okay, don't be silly. Anyway, no, if he does, if he back, comes back, I don't think that he is an. I, I mean, maybe he's an immediate contender, but that depends on who you give him. I wouldn't like to see the same situation that he had before where he comes back and then, you know, he, he won fight. No, title fight. Give it to him right now. You I know? think they would give him, like, a, like, a Mark Hunt, someone he could beat. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, it's similar to what Chris was talking about with uh, Conor McGregor, too. Pay-per-view's down. Lesnar's a draw. It's yeah. as simple as that. You give him one big winnable fight, 
can he even take down Mark Hunt at this point? Cause he, his last fight at Lesnar didn't seem like he could take down an infant, but yeah, I, I, that, that's what Lesnar does, and that's why he's always going to be given high-profile fights because he draws, and it's as simple as that. Yeah, tough, tough division, but I think the way that it yeah. works here for me, in my opinion, Miocic, he wins, he's next. If he doesn't, then Travis Brown, he wins the next one with Brandon Schaub. Give him one more fight, and uh, I wouldn't be able to say who, but then maybe he's next. But see, yeah. that's probably I think that's Tough right now. I think that th- that division is up in arms. I mean, who knows what to do with it right now? Um, All right. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and call it a, a day right there because this has been a long podcast. Uh, as I as I figured it would be with four of us, I'm glad to have had you guys all on. This was an awesome one. A lot of debates, a lot of topics uh, discussed. Um, Hopefully we've been able to enlighten some minds out there to think about what is actually going on with each division, with the, with the champions, with Conor McGregor and Frank Yeager and everything. And uh, for the fans listening, uh, next week we will be pre- previewing UFC 181. Uh, I don't know who will be on it. We'll. <laughs> it's just a matter of whoever I can ever, you know. Who? Chris Bagush. Chris Pagabalana will be there. Chris Pagabalana will be there. And, uh, oh, Jonas. My man got it right, see? What do you say? Okay, go ahead. Say it again. Paul Euchre. Pa- oh. <laughs> Nick doesn't even know how to say Rory McDonald. So. <laughs> like, get him, Ronald. Hey, and you see that, man? He's burning me. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been an awesome podcast. I love having oh, you guys yeah. on. Before we go, actually. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, before we go, I just want to let everyone know we're working on getting this on Stitcher and on iTunes, so look out for that. We'll try to get it out to everyone, let everyone know. That was exactly, yeah, that's where I was going, for sure. Um, guys, be on the lookout on Stitcher. For anybody that has that app, please be on the lookout for our podcast. We're trying to spread the name, spread the word on us, MMA Discussion. Uh, you can hit um, me up at Nick the Phantom on, twi- on Twitter.com. Uh, Chris? Uh, at Chris Pauluk is my account, and then you can get us at Sports of Anarchy as well. And also, Nick, that's the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. What'd you say, Nick? Uh, I was just about to say. Also, for anybody listening that is just you know looking for a podcast to listen to, and you happen to listen to us, uh, please uh, spread the word on the MMA Discussion uh, Facebook page. We still don't know, fans. Uh, I'm going to be as honest as I can. I don't know if we will get uh, the old page back, the one with all the fans, the one with all the crazies. But uh, at the same time, uh, I want to be op- optimistic about it. Uh, optimistic about it. I mean, uh, like Adam Carr is, and being able to to say, "Hey, look, we'll start it from the bottom. We may, we may not. Who knows what'll happen? Um, I'm still trying to figure out what'll happen. But uh, but since then, uh, but since this past week, since uh, since I've had to realize that that may be what we need to do. Um, I will be more active on the page. You'll see me. You'll see Adam. You may even see Jonas. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we're, we're, no matter how it's going MMA, MMA discussion will never die it's not going to happen we won't let it we're going to keep bringing it no matter what please follow us at MMA discussion on the Facebook page I may even get started on a, on an MMA discussion Twitter uh, until then I'll let you know thanks for joining uh, me Jonas, Adam, Chris you guys were awesome this has been a great podcast. Uh, I like having all of us here to discuss. It creates more. Uh, it shows off more opinions. Shows off more debates. Um, great podcast, you guys. Adam, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jonas, thank you. And you. Chris, you're the man as always. And uh, you, guys. it's good talking to you guys. Yes, awesome podcast, fans. Thanks for the questions, and uh, please keep them coming uh, for the next one. Signing off, MMA discussion. Join us on the next one, guys, which will be up yeah. by Wednesday. So look for us uh, before Wednesday, which will be December 2nd, I believe. Um, so look for us on there uh, on Stitcher, on MMA discussion Facebook page, and at sportsofanarchy.com. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Later.